Mr. Isaac Gonzalez, welcome to the Moto Aftermath Show, bud. Good morning, guys. How are you? Sir, it is evening. Yeah, we're not on that West Coast time. <laughs> yeah, not at all. No, it's, uh, let me see, it's 4 o'clock here, but yeah. I don't I say good morning all the time. I all don't know right. why. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. So, so what's happening, man? How was uh, how was going to the race last night? It was it was magical, dude. It was great. It was awesome. Yeah. Are you mm-hmm. eating? Are you eating right now? I hear plates. Uh, you hear my coffee. Oh, okay. All right. Are we doing yeah. Are we doing fancy coffee? Like you're, we're coffee snobbing it? Are you cold? Are you cold brewing over? Like I don't even know what. I was about to say you don't drink coffee, so I would. It's just like stop you right take now. the water, you put it in the thing, you boil it, then you like Dude, you pour it you, over you the can, beans, you know you can, over you the grounds. Cold, you know you can stuff. buy cold brew in a bottle, right? Yeah, I know. No. I'm just saying, dude. I've seen these coffee snobs, okay? And like, if he's, do you if think he, he's a coffee snob? I'm not sure, but if he is, we might have to renegotiate him being a part of the oh, team. Oh my god, dude! I'm the biggest coffee guy you ever meet. Well, there's, Sorry. there's the real different... question is, do you drink coffee with your creamer or creamer with your coffee? Yeah. <laughs> Good question. I had never thought of that. Right, well, the well, like, real question is, how much creamer do you put in? Yeah, your is it coffee? like is it like white girl oh. creamer, or is it like you know just it's, a touch? It's coffee mate cinnamon vanilla cream. Oh, and so it's, it's a, about three quarters. So it's, so it's so that's like white girl. That's like white girl. Nice. Coffee. You're like nice. a basic white girl. Good All right. You. Sick. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. I mean, he, he is from California, so. Yeah, that it makes happens. Sense. It's all right. So anyway, all right. So last night was magical. Tell tell us all about it. Don't leave out any details. We want to hear everything. Uh, let me see. Um, that was, I mean, I kept, I kept thinking about it. That's the side of the first Super Bowl. You know, that is... Side of basically the first Supercross, I imagine. I mean, that was like 40 years before I was born, but I think it's the side of the first it is. Super Bowl. Uh, so, yep. I mean, just to just to be at that stadium is great. And I have to say, LA traffic was. I didn't. I don't think we hit traffic all day yesterday. That was great. Wow! Hell uh, yeah, brother! That's a shock. But yeah, the stadium is much better than I ever thought it would be. It's so cool. Which so is cool. Which is impressive with it being uh, like a hundred years old or whatever. Well, I mean, that's where the yeah. I mean USC plays there, so like yeah. they can't yeah, let they it go. Keep to, it up, and yeah. they got to do the Olympics in five years. Oh yeah, that's right. So. I'm definitely not doing that. <laughs> yeah, well, that, good idea. Yeah, it's probably gonna be super expensive. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, it was great. Oh, my dog's trying to get in my room. Shelby. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Hi Shelby. Anyway, no, it was, it was. Uh, I'm not gonna forget that for a long time. What was the uh, what was the crowd like, man? Like big, everybody into it. it was, oh yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of Deegan shirts in the crowd. I shocking, know. real shocker. That's shocking. When I got in the pits, yeah. But pretty 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 into it. Um, the crowd. Uh, more into Jordan Smith than Hayden Deegan, surprisingly. Love I feel it. Like. Love it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. It was it was a good crowd. It was packed. It was really packed. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Do you feel it was like um, a lot of like casual fans, people just going because hey, this is Supercross, I've never seen it, or did you kind of feel like uh, mm-hmm. there was a mixture of that and, and actual core fans? Because I I assume with LA, you're probably going to get a lot of split there. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm assuming it's all casual. Uh, I did see a lot of industry people. The uh, that was pretty much the only like core people. Yeah, that I saw was the industry people like Chase Marquier. Do you guys remember him? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He was sitting about a few rows up from me, and then yeah, a lot of a lot of like old privateers. I noticed were there, hmm. not well, old, but like, I mean raced a, lot of- a while. A lot of those dudes live in Orange County, so it's not like that. Oh far. yeah. So yeah. Um. Yeah. So did you uh in the pits? Was the did they have the Triumph bikes set up in the pits somewhere? I didn't see them, and unfortunately, I missed them on the track too. <laughs> so I, I'm bummed, dude. Yeah. Well, but, uh, that's yeah. I mean, it there it was it was a weird night for things like. Mm-hmm. Between yeah. the All Stars being before, which yeah, that pissed me up. It, 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 it don't get started on it. It's coming up. <laughs> oh. That's my rant. It's coming oh my up. God, yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. Sorry, I'm watching the races right now. <laughs> I'm like, Did the... Um, oh, go ahead. What's up? No, go ahead. Well, you said you had a bunch of notes on the race. Yeah. All right. Let's hear. Let's hear. Had, let's hear your oh, note. Let's hear your notables on the race here. Um. So if Kenny, if Kenny can uh, keep up with Jet, Eli can beat Jet. That's my note from the 450. Tend to tend to agree with that statement, buddy. I think that you, sir, are going to be uh, not welcome back on the show anytime. I, soon. T- I tend I tend <laughs> to agree with him on that one. Hey. I was thinking the same thing, but go ahead. No, Justin. Yeah. Dude, after. Uh, after both 450 motors, I get a text from Travis saying 17 and 0. Oh, I know, dude. He texted the same thing to the group chat that him, me, and Cole were on, and I didn't even respond to it. I'm like, dude, it's too late in the night for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, I, I can't I, handle this. Is 12:30? I've been up for like 18 hours. I don't care. <laughs> no, no, it was no, it was funny though. Oh man, no, I, dude. Like he's all on board I, with this whole 17 and 0. I mean, clearly you watched the last show, so like he's gonna stick with it. Yeah, dude, that last show was great. By the way. That's all I would <laughs> But I do, I do agree with your point on the Eli thing. Um, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. But obviously, you know, a lot of things that Jet's got to work on over the wintertime with, with bike set up. Mm-hmm. But it all depends on where Eli's health is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, if Kenny can latch on to him and, and pace him and keep him honest and, mm-hmm. you know, chase doing chase things. I mean, like, dude, <laughs> the difference is, is you know, and – I know a lot of people would agree with this statement is, is if that's Eli out front with a 4.4 second lead or whatever it was when Chase hit the deck, Eli mm-hmm. ain't doing that. Eli's not making that dumb mistake. So I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to be very an interesting 2024 season. It, exactly. And you throw Hunter in the mix too. Oh, well, I'm, well, we'll, we'll talk about Hunter when we do our Supercross preview show. I don't really know if I'm on that bandwagon, like same thing with coach thinking he's going to beat jet, but yeah. you know, we'll, we'll get, get to that. We'll get to that. Two fifties here. Yeah. All right, and uh, I don't, I don't want to start anything on Deegan, but I do, I have noticed something being at these races. I don't know if you guys have noticed it too. The Star Yamaha bikes sound a lot different. Like they're, have oh, you yeah. noticed that? Well, you know, it's all the big board kits. Different from <laughs> like what? Like, like I was, who was that? Who was it? I think it was like Tom Vial or something. Just, just they, they sound, they sound like, I want to say deeper. Then I, it's probably all that damn horsepower they have. I don't know. Just if you watch a, even on the broadcast, I feel like you could feel it too or hear it too. But I don't know. I noticed that last night, and I don't know exactly what it is, but um, it's interesting. It's I feel like that's stuff that you can only see or hear while you're there. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That, but um. Anyway, oh my one note on Deegan and Jet. So the 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 first rhythm section where uh, pretty much all the 450 guys by the end of the night were going triple or quad onto the table. I was really hoping Deegan wasn't going to try that because Deegan was going to die on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he definitely would have been the 250 guy to send it. Yeah. Oh yeah, he would have been the guy. I'm glad he didn't try it though for his own his own safety. Yeah. Well, did either of you see in um cuz Race Day Lives, I don't know, they barely caught it cuz like they had the camera moving away, but in the second 450 session, Coop after that section the triple and then you hit the left-hander and then where everybody was going, what was it? Two table over. Coop Yeah, two table over three. Yeah. Coop actually went What'd he go? Two over three. So he actually went roll, and then he went over the table, and then basically doubled out of the corner. Hmm. And he only did it once, but you were stretching it out. Like I'd have to go back and watch it to like see how he exactly set up for it. But he basically went over the table in the middle, and then doubled into the corner and realized, or singled into the corner and realized like how slow that was, how hard you had to check up to not launch into the right hander. But I was like, ah, oh. yeah. I was like, because I want to saw the track memo. I was like, dude, because I honestly thought a lot of those guys were gonna like go onto the table from the uh, beginning of the rhythm section. And just obviously the fucking face was too flat. But um, yeah, I was wondering how many people actually saw that because race day live almost missed it. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see that. I saw Deegan. So they go under the tunnel. They hit that uh, wall turn where Jason Anderson ghost rode his bike and then they come back across and then they uh, hit the wall and then the double. I noticed Deegan in practice and he did it once in one of the mains too. jumped 
like double singled it. I don't off know if anyone. Yeah, did. jumped off the wall. Barely, yeah, yeah. He, he barely caught it on the broadcast because I, I watched the first 250 moto on the broadcast. Yeah, you know who was actually the first person to do that? Derek Kelly did it in the LCQ. Really? <laughs> yeah, he hmm. didn't realize that like no drive into the face, and then you were just kind of floating forward. How much time you were actually spending in the air? And he's like, I, I'm not doing that again. Hmm. Interesting. No, but it just uh, wasn't fast. No, I caught Deegan. I I wish I got it on video, but I caught Deegan doing it in practice. Okay, in maybe he, maybe he did, and that's maybe where Derek Kelly. But like the first time I'd saw anybody do it was Derek Kelly did in the LCQ with like I don't know two laps to go or some shit. But I mean, it just yeah. wasn't faster. It just the face was too vertical, and you just had no drive going into it. So like there was yeah, I, I don't know. No, that that's it. I I I have to say uh, when this whole super motocross stuff got announced, I wasn't too pumped on it seeing it it's actually it turned out better than i thought it would be yeah yeah that was we were me and cooksy and coach were talking about that we were like you know for all the shit we talked about this this turned out being a lot more entertaining than we thought it was going to be so it it passed the eye test passed the sniff test i mean you went into last night and with that you know triple points even it was we need to work on the point system a little bit because i think it's a little (sighs) Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we we thought it was great last night because there were so many different things that you could do, like so many different ways that people. I mean, look at in the 250 class. At one point, Jordan Smith was winning, mm-hmm. which is fucking oh. wild. I actually, and this is for another. Uh, show. And then he, go ahead. And then he did things. Well, got a little help from Dylan Schwartz. The- <laughs> Dylan yeah. Schwartz is a fucking yeah. He, he was a, like he a was wrecking a, yeah. Ball. <laughs> he had to just take out both guys that were you know. Um, but no, I actually, and we'll talk about the we we can maybe talk about this on a different show. But I started thinking about I kind of actually like the format of hey man, like you guys are seated, you know, you actually make qualifying worth a damn going into the motos, and then you do your LCQs during the day, mm-hmm. and then we just have two twenty minute plus one and two fifteen plus one instead of doing the heats and the LCQs because yeah. I kind of like it because and once again, I'd, we'd have to do a show where I go more in depth on my thought on this, but just the mm-hmm. easiest way to explain it is it makes everything mean more every time mm-hmm. you touch the track. Yeah. Instead of, hey man, like I qualified seventh during the day, it doesn't really matter because my heat race doesn't matter. Think about it. Think about if you did it too, and the, all the unseated guys were trying to get into. So you can already you can already see where I'm coming from from this. Like it would it to would get to the LCQ yeah. to even get into the night show. Yeah, no, it would I'm, make I'm every time guys are on track worth something. Whereas like half the time, let's be real, you go to a Supercross race, the only mm-hmm. thing that matters is one lap heater in practice. Yeah, and the mains. Yeah, in the main, everything else doesn't really matter to nope. these dudes. Nope. So not at all. So. All right, what else you got, man? What else did you see? Not um, see? I didn't. I didn't go outside the stadium where they go outside the stadium. Oh, but the peristyle. That was the peristyle. Yeah, that was really cool to watch, though. I mean, I got chills when they're dropping back down and going up. You know, mm-hmm. I'm getting flashbacks to Larry Brooks that one year clipping the ball and. <laughs> well, and did dying. did they have a um? a big screen up there because I was thinking about, I was like, yeah, that'd be a cool spot for like during qualifying. But during the races, I feel like that, like that'd have been a shit spot to stand. Uh, I didn't, I didn't see a big screen out there, so okay. I can't comment. Yeah. Cause I was like, Oh, that'd be cool during practice. But I'm mm-hmm. like in the, and during the races, I'm like, eh, you, you're probably not going to see much, mm-hmm. but yeah, those, uh, where they came out, went in and came out, that was super narrow. So I was, I was really hoping we didn't have a Larry Brooks situation, but thank you. Didn't. Yeah, Kev, we, we talked to Kev right before we talked to you, and he said that that was the only downside to all that up there was it was very narrow, and then the split lane thing coming back in, he's like, it didn't work, and everybody just went to the inside. So Well, you couldn't use the outside of your advantage because you had to check up so hard, so you had yeah. to launch off of it. And I mean, dude, even like in practice, like Chase was manu- manualing over mm-hmm. that face because he didn't want to launch down into the bottom. Yeah. So, like, but that's going to happen, though. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. So... Um. All right. Oh, go ahead. Nothing. He's watching the race. (laughs) Oh, sorry. Um, I did notice in the stadium. So we were on the opposite side of the peristyles, but I noticed the amount of time that Jet would make up coming down that hill and into the sand. That was noticeable. Like Mm -hmm. that was a noticeable. He was faster there, Mm -hmm. and then obviously crazy line before uh, the what's it called the the big triple. Yeah. That was where he was making up the time, and eventually everybody did pick up on that. But um, yeah, I noticed now watching that Chase and Jet were the first ones to pick up on it. I'm a little surprised that Kenny had the balls to do it. 
just knowing what he's been through yeah with that that scary that was pretty cool like kenny uh, i feel like kenny's got more confidence on the suzuki which is wild to say yeah yeah um that second moto that second 450 moto did you happen to notice anywhere where chase was making a lot of time to put that gap in on the guys or was it just kind of an all-over thing because like they weren't really showing him on the broadcast so we couldn't really tell like where he was actually pulling away from those guys uh the only section i could tell uh the only section I could tell that he was making up the time was that triple or quad over onto the table. He was flying over that. He was, I think he had like more dry, like he was sending it over that. I think that's where he got most of his gap. Hmm. I couldn't tell the rest of the track, but that was the one section that he was, he was clearly faster than those guys. Oh, that, that tabletop section. Hmm. That was, that was, that was right in front of where we were sitting. So okay. you could, mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else you got on your notes, man? Um, let me see. Let me see. Did you think? Did at any point did you think Deegan was going to go stride? I didn't. I did. I thought for sure that was going to happen. And oh, that's uh, that's the second part of my rant, so I won't get into it too much here. But okay. yeah, I did. I did think it uh, like. There, there's more to come later in the show, but yeah. Travis thinks think it was a big miss that he didn't do it. Well, I well, will. I'll just say for me, since I don't have a rant on this, I don't think he did. I didn't think he was going to do it. I thought the only way he was going to do it is if he actually won the main, like yeah. actually like won it. Yeah. And then I started thinking about even if he won it, like it's him. Bobby was probably going. Bobby Regan. He's probably going. Don't you fucking go through my bike? I swear to God. Hmm. <laughs> so no, I know. no, I did. I didn't think. I didn't think at all at any point he was actually going to do it. I don't know, man. Like you, dude, I understand it's just as simple as stepping off the bike, but with the way these faces are nowadays, like so many of those things could go wrong. And he's just probably like, man, I know my dad did it. It would have been cool all these years later, but it's just not worth something stupid happening. Yeah. I, uh, once kitchen was in front of him, I, I kind of ruled that out. And honestly, I thought Joe was going to pass him or get it. Yeah. Because Joe comes on late in the race, and he did in that first one, kind of. Mm. Joe was a little unimpressive all day. Honestly, he didn't. He wasn't Chicago Joe, I'll call him. But um, no, um, it was it was fun though. I had I had a blast. Sweet and uh, awesome. What else? I'm trying to think of something else. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure I'll remember like ten thousand things once I get off. That's okay. Because that's normally how it goes. Um, no, did you hear? Here's something. Did you hear Levi Kitchen's tear off story? Dude, yeah, I that was awesome. crazy. That was awesome uh, though. Fucking Levi! I swear to God, that kid pisses me off. <laughs> no, I can't wait to hear this part of the show. <laughs> kid, yeah, he's yeah, he yeah. That was that was good though. I've seen that. Stu did that before too. Just took all the tear offs off his goggles on the line, handed them to his uh, mechanic, and said, "Yeah, I don't need these." It's ballsy. It's ballsy. I mean, Supercross sure. is definitely a lot easier than going outdoors, but it's ballsy. Mm-hmm. And compared to Chase, who I got some inside information, he never pulls the tear offs. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, when you got laminates on and there's like fifty of them, and it's like looking through a brick wall. <laughs> what do you mean he never? What do you mean he never pulls tear offs? Like even during the race? So uh, I uh, I caught up with Shane Doyle after the race, and he actually gave me a pair of goggles from practice okay and he he and it's got full tear-offs on it he told me yeah uh he never pulls tear-offs never that's fucking wild yeah it's it's weird huh. uh he probably a whole bunch when he went head first in the sand though look, <laughs> look bro maybe that's why he's tucking the front all the time he can't see out of his fucking goggles that's probably it you know okay like, hey, chase that, makes- that those are there pull them yeah <laughs> uh that's that's a bummer he's gonna go out like that on honda yeah well you know i don't know he's got a, he's got a point to prove he's he's not super happy but we'll see it's gonna be an interesting off season with him yeah that's for sure while i'm here and i got uh i got this uh question justin how do you think uh mx and nations is gonna go for usa 
Well, we're going to talk about that later in the show, but we can talk about it right now. Uh, so you want to just dive into it? You can, yeah, go for it. Give All us right, your spiel. Well, I don't have a whole lot to say outside of what we said kind of last week. So uh, honestly, ahead. I think it's going to be a rough day, especially for the fact that we're in France and the French fans are so over the top that I don't know what it is, but it just is always giving a boost to the French team. Look, man, I like all the guys on our team. You know, I like AP. I've known the kid for a long time. I've always been a fan of Christian. Like, RJ, like, I think when he's on, he's one of the best dudes in the world on a 250. But Erne is such a different animal. There's going to be such a crazy vibe. Uh, I know Steve and all the pundits think that, oh, yeah, we get on the box. And Travis and me talked about this on the way to Chicago. I think we'll be lucky to get sixth or seventh overall. Wow. And I don't, and I, I think RJ. If this version of RJ shows up, he could be the one bright spot. But even if you go down through the list with like the shuffling of the classes about like Prado is going to be an, M- an open instead of MX1, you know, they're putting Ruben Fernandez in there. They're changing some guys like Liam Everett's going to be on a 450 and not a 350. Oh, I really? mean, you start looking at like AP, okay? Like, dude, he's not going to be Jet. He's not going to beat Renault. He's not going to beat Fevre. He's not going to beat Prado. He's not going to beat Gertz. You know, and then you got Christian. Who knows what he's going to do? Like, RJ might do the best, but. I think qualifying is going to be super rough, so we're going to have a shit gate pick. And I don't see us getting in the top five. Like, I just I don't see how it's it's possible. Like, the teams this year, I mean, obviously we're listening, missing them some star power with Hurlings not being there. But like, you go through the teams, and they're they're all stacked. I mean, this is like even Germany is good with with Roxen and Langenfelder. So um, I don't know, man. I just you look through the list and like who 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 would you give the best chance to? Like even Christian. Like what? What's he gonna get? Like tenth, twelfth? Like, dude, he's gonna get smacked around by a bunch of MX2 guys. Like, let's be real. Like, he's not gonna beat Hunter. If well, who knows how Hunter's gonna feel after this race? But I don't know. They'll probably shoot up with Cortisone. Um, I don't see him beating Vial. I don't see him beating Kunin. I don't see him beating Langenfelder. So, I, I wish I could say that I feel like we could be top five, but I, I don't see it. We're not beating Australia. We're not beating Belgium. We're not beating France. Like, we're not beating Netherlands. Spain's really good, so I I don't know. I I wish we could be better, but we've always struggled when we go to France for MX of Nations. So, what do you think? Well, I gotta ask you, Justin. What was so? I've heard about 2009. We went in with Dungey, who was it? Tedesco and and Weimer. Yep. Weimer. Wasn't it the same vibe that we couldn't win? No, because if you think about it, Dungey had just come off an MX2 title. So like that was okay. the first time in the in, in the 450 class. Weimer had been like yeah, we nobody thought we could win, but you were talking about guys that had actually been battling that year in our own series for for like oh, wins yeah. and podiums. Like I know AP's been on the box, but Christian's been out. Christian's been out to been what? Glendale? Was it Glendale yeah, that he crashed? Yeah, Glendale. So that was what? <clears throat> February? That was a long time ago. February. So okay, I know he's been riding. I've seen his videos on the out like he's been getting that biked out and he's been riding at like Spiderwick or whatever the hell it is. Spider MX. Spider MX. Like, RJ is either on or off, let's be real. And AP couldn't even win a moto in our own series. So, like, I, I get that, and it was a different vibe, but we don't even have a champion from our own series going or a guy that even, you know, won a race. Whereas Dunge, like I said, he won the MX2 title. Like, Tedesco had battled for podiums. You know, Weimer was this probably the second best American that year in the, the uh, lights class. So... I wish I could say there could be that vibe, but the other teams weren't as good as the teams are. I mean, dude, Australia, like, you know, we see with Jet Hunter, France with Fever, Vial, and Renault. I don't know. I I wish I could say it'd, it'd be the same thing, but we don't even have a champion from our own class going. Interesting. And I mean, uh, and Geyser's rounding, Geyser's rounding into form too as well. So like. That's going to be a struggle. Like, Slovenia is not going to get on the box or even get top five or probably even top ten. But Geyser could sure as shit go out and win both of his motos. Yeah. Big caveat here, too. If uh, Hurlings is healthy, him and Geyser are going to go at it next year in GPs. Well, right. that depends on if Hurlings decides to not take a year off and just, you know, come over here. <laughs> True. Well, if he comes over here, he's whooping Jet around. So. <laughs> Fake news. Look, man, I believe the same thing, but Hurlings has just got to work, focus on being healthy and just not having bad juju go his way. Like, he's just, he's got so much issues. Um, I know Travis and me have debated all this time, but I still feel like Hurlings, when he's 100%, is the fastest dude in the world on an outdoor track. On an outdoor track. Not on a supercross, on an outdoor track. 
Um, but he just Hurlings hasn't been healthy, healthy since like 2021. So, you know, he's fragile. I mean, you're not you're not wrong, and you look at the sense that he just gets hurt all the time. He's it's fragile. Just, it's just stupid stuff. So he's like Hunter. Um, we'll see. I'm actually more uh, looking forward to his last year of his contract when he comes over here because. Honestly, at this point, like him racing GPs, it, it doesn't even really matter anymore. No one cares. Not about GPs. No. Nope. Not for him. I mean, he's nope. done everything. Like, whatever. You know, he's not beaten. He's not winning as many Kyle Rowley championships. He's he's already mashed Everts. So why does it? It doesn't really matter anymore at this point for him. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. if he uh, he didn't get hurt the first time this year, he was probably going to win that championship. Oh, he would have won this championship. He would have won last year. He would have won 2020. Like, he would have won them all. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like guys are a lot. Like, Timmy G is one of my favorite guys, but, you know, he has not beat Hurling straight up for a championship when Hurling's has stayed healthy. But, you know, you got to be there. Mm. Whoa. All right. Whoa. Any, anything else we want to talk about, man? Um... You guys want to come down for A1? Absolutely fucking not. I'm not coming to California for a long time. Travis hates California just as much as he hates Chicago. I don't like, I don't like going to communist countries. Oh, boy. We're not going to get into politics. We might. I don't want to. Hey, we'll meet at uh, we'll meet at. How about that? Meet where? I still didn't hear what he said. I didn't hear what you said either. You cut out. Uh, Millville, Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we might be able to do that. I'm starting to save my money for that one. That a there boy. There you go, buddy. That a boy. So, all right, man. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. Thanks Thank for you. everything Thank you. you do for us, man. Really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, and we'll, uh, you know, we're going into off season here. I do have some shirts coming your way. I gotta place another shirt order with a couple for some of the new or some of the. Blah, blah, blah. I gotta get a couple more shirts so I can send you the some of the new colorways here. So I'll I'll have some of that coming your way here before before we start the 2024 season. Uh, I, I do have a normal job, so uh, if I can make it out to the test track this year, I definitely will, but no promises on that one. That's okay. Whatever you can do is fine, so okay. we'll make it happen. But All right. Thanks, uh, buddy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Right. Thanks, guys. So all right. Appreciate later. It.